sister actually slept in this room here. My father died in this room. Really? He passed away in this room, but I didn't find him to say it. I mean, he literally died here. Oh, wow. He died my first year at dental school. We are back on Sister Circle Live with Married to Medicine's Dr. Jackie. Yes, my God, that was very compelling. Yes, it really it was. Yes, it yes, yes, yes. But you have a fire and intensity behind your Fifty Shades of Pink Foundation. Tell us a little bit about that and how does it benefit women? On October 13th this year, we're having our sixth annual Fifty Shades of Pink Fashion Extravaganza. It's a gala. We have a title sponsor, Life Bright. Yes. And we are just showcasing the beauty of women who have been diagnosed with breast cancers. And they're walking the runway. Look at me now. Yeah. You know, I made it through. I'm a warrior. Yeah. Yeah. So we are super excited. It's absolutely amazing. You know, I've been almost every year. I can't go this year. I'm sorry, Jack. Okay. But uh, <laughs> it, it's. It's awesome. It's it's really awesome. beautiful. It, it really is. is. Yes, I love it. I love what you're but doing. But this year is winter wonderland, so really? we, it will look like you're in snow. It's 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 an amazing mm. event, and it's amazing testimony to I look good, so I feel good. Now, are you yeah. encouraging everyone to wear white this year? Yes, absolutely. Wear your white. Mm -hmm. If you don't have white, wear anything but a splash of pink. Mm -hmm. But definitely get your tickets. Go yeah. to the website, Fifty Shades of Pink Foundation dot org. Get your tickets. If you don't make it. We'll take your donation. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. I'll yeah. listen to that. <laughs> Jackie, could you just tell me, after all these years, I mean, you, you're a survivor, a warrior of breast cancer, why are you still so passionate? It is something no woman ever feels that she'll get that phone call. Mm -hmm. And when I had the phone call, I had the beauty of sitting on both sides of the knife. I knew too much as a doctor. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about being a patient. And I just want to make sure other women don't go through it afraid, mm -hmm and they're psychologically and physically yeah. in touch. Right. Well, thank you so much, Jackie, for being here with us today. Of course, you can catch us on Married to Medicine every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. And coming up, if you're watching us for the full hour, Dr. Jackie is going to stay with us and join all of our sisters at the table. And remember, the conversation always continues online. Welcome back to Sister Circle Live. Uh, we've asked my friend and castmate of Married to Medicine, Dr. Jackie, to join us here at the table. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more to Dr. Jackie about health issues with women. So Selena's going to kick this off. Dr. Jackie, something that has been going, that I've been seeing on the internet everywhere and just in, in reports everywhere, the mortality rate of black women in childbirth. Absolutely. What speaks to this? Why is this happening for us? Black women have a different biological makeup. We have different genetics. Mm -hmm. And we have more hypertension and diabetes than other races. Right. Leading cause of death in women mm -hmm. is, you know, heart disease. Right. Hypertension, diabetes. Mm -hmm. So is there anything that we can do as black women to kind of prevent this or, you know, because I saw this um, video on Instagram um, and just, I don't know if this is fact or not, but I'm glad you're here to kind of co-sign, to, to kind of elaborate on this. But um, the doctor was saying that black women, they, that they don't listen to black women when they come to the, he said that white doctors don't listen to black women when they talk about their different ailments. Mm. This this was uh, this was on the internet on social media. I think he had I, on a I whole saw doctor's that. Yeah. and everything. So, I, I'm I'm really confused about what he meant by that. He said he said that they don't really take black women seriously when they talk about their different ailments, as if we're exaggerating of some sort. But could we say that all Caucasian male doctors are doing that to us? Mm. It, that's that's got to be a blanket statement. We, yeah. we can't say that. And, and we can, but I think there's a whole... Oh, we can say that? We yet? cannot. Oh, okay. We can't. Say I, can't. I, was, I, thought, yeah, I was like, can't. wait a minute. I was like, no. wait a minute. No, this was just this one doctor. Right. This was this one doctor saying this. Well, let's clarify the misconception that black women are dramatic. Yes. Mm. We Start are there. not dramatic. We're very no, we passionate. Mm -hmm. Yes. And we've gone through some things. Speak on it, Jack. Right. But we are not <laughs> dramatic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One, there may be a cultural difference in how we speak. Mm. And so maybe there's a misunderstanding. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. And definitely not dramatic. So, and, and it spoke to, well, he talked about how Serena Williams, mm -hmm. you know, how she went into her embolism and how she almost died during pregnancy. Can you talk to us about, like, she had to insist 
and getting a CAT scan. Mm -hmm. Why was it so difficult for her to have to insist on it? That's a great question. A lot of times as a physician, we don't always understand what you're trying to articulate mm -hmm. because patients will come in and say to me, I have a yeast infection. Mm -hmm. You don't How really you know? give me the symptoms. Right. Okay. And so a lot of times the patients may not give us the symptoms where we understand mm. enough of what you're saying. It doesn't make medical sense and we may not act on it. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm going to change gears for just a moment. Recently, we were here on Full Circle, and we were talking about women having it all. And the question becomes, can you have it all without certain parts of your life suffering, i.e., with your children or your relationships? So we've all had our take on it, and I would love to have your take on how you feel about women having it all. Mm -hmm. We can have it all, but there's a certain significance we put on this at this time, and, you know, certainly things suffer. Right. You know, I work late, I'm up, I'm tired, I'm not there that day, and I'm exhausted the next day. And so the relationship does take a toll. But when I'm giving it my time, I give it my all. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. So mm -hmm. you're saying that you have to prioritize <laughs> whenever, when, when it's uh, specific to the situation. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, Jackie, I want to talk to you a little bit about fibroids. I see that that is very prevalent in African-American women. Um, Please, first and foremost, help us to understand exactly um, how the fibroid is, um, uh, how the fibroid comes about. I understand that it is a overgrowth of smooth tissue. Mm -hmm. um, why are we so susceptible to it as African American women, and what can we do to, ki to, to kind of uh, prohibit that from, from happening? So, a fibroid is a smooth muscle tumor. Mm -hmm. Now, if I knew the answer to why are African American women more susceptible, and we certainly mm -hmm. see it more in black women, then we would be Nobel Peace Prize winners. Come on, Peace Prize oh, Hello. Right. We definitely don't know the answer. It's not the food. We don't believe. Mm -hmm. We didn't inherit that. We don't believe. We don't know the answer as to why it's very common mm -hmm. among African American women. But what we do know, it is. Mm -hmm. Do you see, um, especially since you're a gynecologist, mm -hmm. do you, when you do um, ultrasounds, what is the difference when you see that, that there is a growth mm -hmm. and then maybe they come back and then there's, the, it goes down, like the, the fibroid gets larger and then sometimes like if they change something or whatever, what do you see as the most common thing that they're doing that makes the fibroid shrink? Well, a lot of women will take herbs mm -hmm. and say, I'm getting rid of the fibroids. I think it renders the fibroid inactive. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what it's doing, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's inactive. And we'll do surgery and you've had all the herbs mm -hmm. and the fibroid is softer. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think you can get rid of them. Rid of them, it's yeah. just they're, they're making it a little better. Now, right. So what you're saying is the only way to truly get rid of a fibroid is to actually have it surgery. removed surgically. Yeah. Well, you can do an embol um, fibroid embolization. Okay, so there, there are treatment that. options. You'll see a radiologist, and they will, of course, thread a catheter into the uterine artery that feeds the bl blood flow to the fibroid, mm -hmm. block that blood flow, and the fibroid shrinks. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. loses volume. Okay, so it's never removed. In that case, in that it just case, shrinks. It shrinks. And and can uh, women having fibroids can impede them from also having children? Absolutely. Okay, let's talk about the impact. Get, yeah. yeah, you know, if your uterus is filled with fibroids, uh, it may block the opening from the fallopian tube. Mm -hmm. It may impede implantation from the pregnancy. Mm -hmm. uh, you may bleed heavily, and you're not even having sex. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it certainly can. So what can women do to kind of uh, I guess get in front of this situation. Well, I heard you say earlier, stay woke. Okay, how about it? <laughs> no. <laughs> stay woke. Right. Know your body. Yes. Know your body. Yes. And then see a doctor. Mm -hmm. Not the girlfriend table, mm -hmm. but see a doctor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Dr. Jackie, you have been so successful. What do you attribute to your success? Hard work mm -hmm. and God. Yes, Lord. When I tell you that's it, yeah. that's the only two ingredients you need Absolutely. at the end of the day. I have a real quick question, Dr. Okay. Jackie. Now, why is it that at the end of our menses, why is it the best time to check ah. our breasts good, for good, good, Trina. Those, hormonal ch uh, those hormonal changes you have during your period, your breasts are tender and swollen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So once all that's gone, it's less tender. All the swelling's gone away. Get in. Feel. <laughs> Get in. Get in. Get in. Get in. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. For tickets to her Fifty Shades of Pink Foundation Gala, you want to go to 50shadesofpinkfoundation.org. And that is the number 50, okay? Not the word.